Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Looking at something interesting surrounding our upcoming day of Pentecost. And in this video, we're going to be looking at various scriptures to show that not only are we in the day of the Lord and have been for a while, but the earth has been pelletized by fire and brimstone. And we could actually be waiting for the third trumpet to sound. Talking about the book of Revelation chapter 8. These are new revelations within the last 24 hours, guys. Y'all help me sort them out in the comment section. And go ahead and hit the like button. Um, in our last video, I showed you this map here, which is actually three maps overlaid upon each other. There's the X Across America map, followed by the USGS's map of the most dangerous fault lines in America. And then we have the Navy's map of future America, when you overlay all three of them on here, you see that the X really does mark the spot. But there's one other map that I could overlay, and that is the map of the Earth's electromagnetic field. We're looking here at what they call the South Atlantic Anomaly. Well, you see, that's where it is now in 2022, and that's what's causing some of your communication problems over there. Um, but you see it's projected in the year 2025 to completely cover the United States of America or North America. This is all related to our shift in our poles. Our poles are shifting, which to me seems to be what we read about in the book of Revelation chapter 8 and verse 12, where it's talking about the fourth angel sounding. So then I got to thinking on this, you know, how could the fourth angel be sounding already? And I'm going to tell you now, some of you guys are going to get mad down in the comment section. You're going to tell me that you thought what I'm about to tell you way back long, many, many years ago. But to that, I say, guys, I really can't go by thoughts, not even my own thoughts. I have to have scripture in order to back up what I say. Else, I'm just making up stuff, which would include telling lies. And that's not acceptable on the path that I want to be on. So I have to stick to the word. And what we find in the Keys of Enoch, or the book called Third Enoch, is that our Earth is going through a null in an electromagnetic field of the entire solar system. And during this event, it's going to cause our poles to shift. But like I said, how will we be so far along? Well, if you've been following our channel, you see not too long ago, we did a video on the volcano Krakatoa in 1883. Turns out, this was the beginning of what we know as the Day of the Lord. We know because the sky cracked back there in 1883, the year before the Third Testament of the Bible was inspired in 1884. That Krakatoa event, you see, it started erupting on Second Passover. It had another event there on Pentecost. Each one of the major events of Krakatoa failed on a feast day. That's how you know for sure that it is significant. Not only did it fall the year before the Third Testament came down, but these dates correspond to holy days, days of fasting, feast days, and such. So, in other words, we're already in the day of the Lord. We've been there since 1883. Some of the confusion is that a lot of people want to believe that the day of the Lord will be a 24-hour period. When it turns out, a day is like a thousand years. So we've been in this period for a while. Anyway, if you fast forward to 2018, you see that the son of Krakatoa, or the child of Krakatoa, fulfilled another biblical prophecy. You're looking here at the before and after of this mountain. And what you're seeing is how this volcano, which is a mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. This is where it started off at. That was the summit of the mountain. And you can see how much of it was actually cast into the sea, into this new caldera. But then when you look around it, it appears as though the water looks like blood. The thing about it, when we come back and we look at the particulars of these events, we see that that mountain was actually cast into the sea during Hanukkah in the year 2018. This was the second major event in 2018. The first one occurred back in September of 2018. 
It actually occurred on September the 28th in the year 2018. Well, that was during the Feast of Tabernacles in the year 2018. And guys, if you go back and look at my channel in 2018, I was telling you guys about this. I was jumping up and down about an earthquake in 2018. But the only reason why I didn't come back recognizing this event and screaming that I told you so was that just like now, I don't have a television in my house or access to any news. So whereas this prediction, which I had prayed for and received, should have made me internet famous, actually turned out to be very humiliating as everybody, including myself, thought that the date came and passed with no significance. And until this day, the friends have stopped talking, but the family members still say that I was wrong. But anyway, let's go on. So before we can submit this idea to see whether it can pass the laugh test, we have to go back and look at verse 7, which talks about the first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and a third part of the trees were burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. So this is talking about fire and brimstone. And what's funny, guys, is when you look at the movies, including old preachers, they all used to bang on the pulpit and talk about how fire and brimstone was coming. But you notice how nobody's banging on the pulpit and talking about fire and brimstone anymore? First of all, you see how over in the Indonesia area, there seem to be a lot of forest fires. You see, in one part, there was nearly a third of all the vegetation was burnt up just like Revelation is talking about but that's over there in Indonesia when we look here in America we see that we have a lot of fires too like what you see on this map over here from echowest.org let me show you something interesting about these fires we're looking here in 2013 and you see the fires that are going on what I want to show you is how some of these fires in these areas seem to be clusters. It seems like small fires broke out all over the place in this small area. Some of them creating bigger fires. But we see these clusters all over the world. Now they want us to believe that some of these forests are self-combusting. Or that somebody's running around with a lighter or throwing cigarettes out of the car but here in 2014 look at this cluster of fires here in Kansas even crossing into Oklahoma now do we really believe that somebody's running around with a lighter setting these fires or that these areas are just self combusting on their own look at how it's a cluster in 2015 we see a lot of fires in California but when we zoom in a little bit, it looks like these fires are almost pelletized. Here's 2016. But also in 2016, we see that Tennessee took a hit. A splash of fires that covers five or six states. Now here's the West Coast in 2017. Notice how it's a cluster of small fires. 2018. 2019. But when we zoom into these areas, like in Idaho, you see how it was tiny dots that don't follow any roads or anything. This fire was only two acres wide, while this one over here burned 39 acres. Now, like I said, this is going on all over the world. But I think this map here showing the fires in Australia kind of makes us understand what's going on here. See how the fires are along the coastline and appears as though they increase more as we get towards the coast. Just like down in this area. And this table I created from the fires by acres in America that you can find on Google. I added a trend line and what we find is that although the number of fires has been decreasing in America the acreage in which they're burning is increasing and they overlap in the year 2015 so 
looking back at this map of Australia, it appears as though whatever is blanket bombing these areas with fire pellets is getting more accurate. And instead of these large clusters landing offshore, they're starting to come more and more inland. So this is fire and brimstone. This is sulfur pellets coming out of the sky. We're being pelted. The world is under siege by fire and brimstone. That's what's causing all of these fires. So there we have the first angel sounding, creating fires all over the world. And we have the sounding of the second angel, which caused the burning mountain to splash into the water. But I haven't yet found anything as far as the third angel sounding. When a great star falls from heaven, as it were a lamp, and a third part of the rivers were made blood. And we see in verse 12 that the fourth angel is the pole shift when we'll lose eight hours in a single day. That's predicted to be at least nine months away, sometime around the spring of 2023. So where is Wormwood? Unless we can find a material manifestation of this prophecy since the year 2018, this is what we have next. Now let me show you this file I used to work on back in the year 2020. After doing a lot of studying in the Shepherd of Hermes, I realized that it was giving us timelines, telling us when things would happen. Now, like I said, I didn't have a television, so I missed a lot of this. But what we read in Visions chapter 1 in the book called The Shepherd of Hermes is what took place in the year 2018. That was his vision of the tribulation. Well, if you jump to Similitudes 8 verse 84, you hear about the rods and in 59 and verse 47 you hear about these examination of these rods well again that's what happened in 2018 so it was stuff like this and my own testimony going back to 1998 when I first read the book of Hermes now I've explained this all in a video a while back but where it appears that we're at in the timeline, according to what we read in the Shepherd of Hermes, is at the completion of the tower. That's in Similitudes 9. And it is to occur in the year that started 2021 and ends 2022. Now this is a bit confusing, I know. And I'm going to have to dig up that old video or I'm going to have to redo it. Because what this is talking about is the days of the seventh month being played out in years. In other words... The 15th day of the seventh month was fulfilled back there in the spring of 2015. That's when our tabernacling period started and it ends in the spring of the year 2022, which is when we could see the prophecy being fulfilled in Haggai chapter two, verses one through six, where he's talking about the 21st day of the seventh month. That puts us in 2022. Now, I know this is a little bit hard to follow and understand, but just so you see, here's Tabernacles. The week of Tabernacles would have started in about 2015. That would be the 15th day of the seventh month. You say, well, okay, coach, where is the 10th day of the seventh month? For that, you go back to the Haitian earthquake. That event that killed over a quarter million people back there in Haiti fell on the 10th day of the seventh month. Anyway, I see some errors in this chart. I haven't looked at it since 2020. So I'm gonna end up doing this again. Let's just go on. I'm really having to rush this video, guys. My boss wants me to get it out today for some reason. So let's come over here to the epistle of the Apostolorum. Down here in verse 17, we see that the disciples asked the Messiah when he was to return. And notice how they're told that he would return in the 120th part or the 120th Jubilee. Well, the 120th Jubilee cycle ends in September. So this kind of puts a time crunch on the Father. Else we will be in the 121st Jubilee cycle. That starts in the fall of 2023. But notice here how it's giving us a time frame within the 120th Jubilee. 
it says between the Pentecost and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Now, it should be noted that the Coptic translation said the Feast of Passover to the Feast of Pentecost, which is the same as the Ethiopian translation. But if this original translation is true, that means that his return is to start anywhere between this Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks 2022, and the Feast of Unleavened Bread in the year 2023. So will this be the time when we see the Messiah's feet land on Mount Olives, turning it into a crater? Only time will tell. And based on past prophecies, I don't mean to try to exalt myself, but only the word of God, which led me to the correct conclusion back there in September of the year 2018. Pulling out these scriptural dates is not an error. I believe the problem is our expectations and what we think will happen in during these prophecies. A prime example is I was resting over here comfortably in my tent in Alabama, thinking that somehow scripture had let me down, not realizing that these prophecies were being fulfilled on the other side of the world. And I was just unaware of them. So let's keep our eyes open for whatever is to come. We'll do more videos on this one. Like I said, I'm rushed to get it out, but before I do the next one, I'll be checking the comments as I prepare for a better presentation. So make sure that you have that bell notification button pushed. Else, you probably won't get a chance to see these videos when they come out. So what is it that I think will happen? I personally think it's the hour of the conscious. I believe there's some event that's coming that's going to wake us up. This event is what's going to make us realize that we're in the day of the Lord and have been there for a while, talking about all of humanity. That's why I posted a playlist on the conscious, guys. We really need to be prepared for that event no matter when it comes. That's going to have a huge effect on humanity. But what I think we can see this time, guys, is what we see down here in the Third Testament, chapter 64, verse 38 where it's talking about a new planet will be discovered that would illuminate our world. So will this be the sign of the Son of Man in the sky that will awaken us? I'm not going to call it a guess because I'm drawing lots on it. And you know how that works. But I guess only time will tell. Y'all keep me posted if y'all see anything strange out there. Like I said, I don't have access to news sources like most of you do. So I miss a lot of stuff, but this could be the red planet, planet X or the blue star that the Hopi talk about. All of those are probably talking about the same event, but notice how it will rain stars on our planet. Well, that's what's going to mess our water up for a while. So in the meantime, guys, let's keep our eyes to the sky. Let's stay out of the sun and let's pray for one another.